Hello, Internet friend. Today, the inflation battle. It's the White House versus the Federal Reserve. I'm David Ravel, and this is Value Side. Inflation. We see it absolutely everywhere. When we go to the grocery store, out to eat, or fill up the car. Prices are higher everywhere. And so much so that it's having a real impact on our standard of living. So what are our government leaders doing about this problem? How are they helping resolve this bout of inflation? It's an interesting question, and you may be surprised by the answers. What's fascinating about today's inflation is that it began right out of the blue, almost instantly. From 1990 until the first half of 2020, inflation, as measured by the Consumer Price Index, was less than 2%, with just two exceptions. During the first half of 2005 and the first half of 2008, when the CPI rose just slightly above 2%. Inflation was not our problem back then. Deflation was. There was a real danger that the economy might fall into a deflationary spiral, like they had experienced during the Depression of the 1930s. Back then, people simply did not have any money to purchase goods and services. Businesses closed for lack of customers. The nation was in a vicious cycle. Fewer jobs meant less money in the economy which meant closed businesses, which led to fewer jobs. Well, you get the picture. Now, as we've discussed before, an economist named John Maynard Keynes proposed that the government prime the pump by putting money into the economy by hiring workers and creating various subsidies and grants. Franklin Roosevelt picked up on the idea and is credited with bringing the nation out of the Depression. Incidentally, the country fell into the same depressionary spiral in the first quarter of 2020 at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. This time, it was state and local governments that shut down businesses, but the results were the same. Lost jobs, lower economic activity, and a burgeoning depression. However, this time, Washington pursued the same solution that Roosevelt used nearly a century before. Put money into the system. Remember those stimulus checks? Well, their aim was to bring us out of those economic doldrums. Now, economists call this prime-the-pump strategy fiscal stimulus. It involves the government giving money to citizens and businesses to promote economic activity and return to a growth phase. As we can all see, fiscal stimulus worked reasonably well during the troubled times when economic growth falters. After all, we did return to an expansionary economy after the COVID-19 pandemic. But fiscal stimulus is no panacea. It's not a solution to all of our economic problems. In fact, when fiscal stimulus is applied during a time when the economy is already growing— This added stimulus translates into inflation. Too much of a good thing can do more harm than good. And that's how Keynes saw it. Keynes was adamant that government stimulus is a strategy government should only use sparingly. What's more, he felt that the debt that would be created should be paid back as soon as the economy was back on its feet and able to sustain commercial growth. Unfortunately, the current administration hasn't read the rest of Keynes' book. They're all intoxicated with spending and stimulus, and they've made that a permanent feature of our government. You've read that under President Biden, the federal government spends a trillion dollars every hundred days. But like pushing on a string, this excessive stimulus has morphed into inflation. The stimulus was great, at bringing us out of the COVID-19 depression. But we're well beyond that now. Now, it only brings inflation. The current government spending has one other dimension that makes it particularly harmful. And the White House doesn't get all the blame. Congress is equally guilty here. In the world of Keynes and Roosevelt, it was assumed that all government spending would go to the American people. This is why Roosevelt created programs such as the Civilian Conservation Corps 
and the Works Progress Administration. However, much of today's government spending goes offshore. Those tremendous military aid packages, which are being used to fight wars in Ukraine and Gaza, provide little, if any, stimulus to the American people. Yet it will be the case that American people who will have to pay the debt created. This brings us to the chief manager of our finances, the Federal Reserve. The nation's central bank is responsible, by congressional mandate, for maintaining stable prices, in other words, low inflation, and promoting full employment. But how can you do that when a crosstown is the biggest spender in history, promoting inflation daily? The Fed's in a real bind here. We saw it this week when they announced their latest interest rate decision, no change. What else could they do? Yes, the economic numbers all look like they're slowing. GDP and inflation are both down, while unemployment rose last month. But who knows what the inflationist-in-chief will do next. In the supporting material for their meeting, the Fed provides a summary of their economic projections. Within the summary is a so-called dot plot, a record of what each Fed governor sees as an appropriate interest rate. All 19 dots fell below the current 5.5% interest rate, while eight of those dots, those governors, thought the current interest rate should be below 5%. In other words, when asked individually, the Fed governors felt that interest rates should be lower, and some thought it should be much lower, a drop of more than 50 basis points. Yet they're frozen by this administration that won't control its spending and thereby won't curtail inflation. And that's today's Value Side. For all of our articles and podcasts, visit valueside.com. I'm David Ravel. Value Side is independently written and researched. The views expressed are strictly my own.